Welcome to Recap Flicks, today I will present you an horror, mystery and drama episode, titled Down, from Into the Dark series from 2019, enjoy. It's raining hard on a Friday night, even with Valentine's Day tomorrow, Jennifer is still on her laptop contemplating on how to send a very important email, because she had a fight with her boyfriend. Meanwhile the other main character, Guy, is heading out after drying his wet pants in the bathroom. Jennifer and Matt are the only ones seen leaving their offices and waiting for the elevator. They enter the same elevator on different floors and make small talk. On the way down, the thunderstorm strikes the office building and the elevator abruptly stops on the 42nd floor, they are both shocked by the sudden movement. Matt starts hitting the call button and asks for help, but it doesn't seem to be working, so she suggests hitting the alarm button but it also fails. Jennifer notices that the monitor is still working and is confused on how they were trapped as he tries and fails to open the door manually. Jennifer quickly sees the surveillance camera and both starts waving to it. With no cell phone signal possible, they worry they'll be stuck in the elevator together until Tuesday morning for 72 hours. As time flies they are shouting for help but here is no one to help them. They start making conversation and Jennifer tells the guy that she has a plane to catch. The guy starts asking her about her work and then he's stating that he's new to this company. Guy tries to reach the ceiling but it's too high for him, Jennifer sees this and offers to help so she gets up on his shoulders and tries to find the hatch, but she gets frustrated after not being able to find it. Jennifer realized that her flight was over and they both gets pissed and angry. They realize they didn't know each other's names and introduce themselves. Jennifer feels a little thirsty, then Guy is taking out from the bag a bottle of water and hands it to her. Jennifer declines and Guy makes her choose between water and wine. After that they discover that both of them possess a corkscrew, and the awkwardness begins to fade away so he offer her water again, and this time, Jennifer takes it. Jennifer need to use the toilet and Guy tells her that she can do inside the elevator. The guy tells her that is normal and that she can use his termos. After more repeated refuse, she finally accepts and she squats into a corner and releases it everything while Guy is on the opposite side looking away. As they are looking for ways to kill the time start drawing on the wall with a corkscrew. They start talking and Jennifer says that she has a complicated relationship. Once Matt hears Jennifer saying that, she still loves her boyfriend, he gets upset and says there's a connection between them. After that, Matt opens the bottle of wine and soon, they both start drawing each other. Matt confesses that he actually saw her and check her out a couple of times and Jennifer gets flattered. Jennifer takes a picture of Matt's drawing and they start recording themselves while asking about dirtiest places where they had sex, because Matt is hesitates, she reveals that she had sex in a library. Under the influence of alcohol, Guy and Jennifer became intimate inside the elevator and starts kissing, they passionately make love several times covering every inch of the floor. Afterwards, Guy tells Jenny that he could love her, she finds it very strange and says that they would forget everything that happened between them and she insists the intercourse was merely casual, and tells him that they're not a thing. Frustrated by what he sees as rejection, Guy admits that his story is a lie. His name isn't Guy and he's not an office worker. Instead, he works as one of the building's security guards and has essentially been stalking her. Furthermore, he stopped the elevator with his key when she wasn't looking. He then takes out the key from his pocket and produces the elevator to start working again. After hearing the truth, Jennifer is furious, angrily telling she'll call the police and he'll rot in jail. Guy isn't having it though, so he stops the elevator. They get into a physical altercation, wherein the key is accidentally broken. Jennifer gets very angry, she picked her high heels and hit Guy in the head until he was left unconscious. While she was checking him, he suddenly grabs her and smashes her head against the floor. When she wakes up he's already waiting for him and he claims that it would be better to end her life rather than going to jail. After they calm down, the man apologies and tries to find a way out. He found a cover above the elevator that was loose, Jenny promises that she will not go to the police and that she will be his girlfriend. Guy agrees and helps Jenny get out of the elevator, once out, her face changes and leaves him behind. He pulls himself out to follow her, and after a chase, 
pulls her down just as she's trying open the elevator doors on another floor, but she's falling back into the elevator cabin. Jennifer is the first to recover and ties Guy up. She records his video confession on her cell phone. This time, Guy reveals the truth. His name is John Deacons and he used to be a successful white collar worker until he crashed his car, killing a female passenger. After serving six months in jail, he couldn't get a promising job. He plotted the elevator incident to get a taste of his former life. Very early Monday morning, another security guard, Eddie, arrives to take his girlfriend up to the high-rises roof. He notices the elevator stuck and works to free the pair. John, who has untied his hands and knocked out Jennifer, lures Eddie halfway into the elevator before starting it and slicing the man in half. After cleaning up, John deletes files from the security desk computer and kills Eddie's girlfriend. He carries an unconscious Jennifer to the parking garage, stuffs her into his car trunk, and drives away. When John stops the car and opens its trunk, Jennifer appears to be dead. However, she suddenly attacks, knocking him down. She gets into his car and begins to drive away, before reversing and crashing into a dumpster into which John has died. John is barely alive inside the dumpster. Jennifer starts to walk away, puffing on a cigar. She turns and tosses the lit cigar into the dumpster, and it bursts into flames, killing John burning him alive. 